Hello and welcome to the Muddy Boots Allotment Channel. My name is Nigel Dukes and in this new series, Growing Made Easy, I'll be taking a look at some of the vegetables that I grow in easy to follow steps from sowing the seed right the way up to harvest. Today I'm going to be sowing some parsnips and a particular favourite of mine, a lot of other growers, is this Gladiator F1. There are a few ways of growing your parsnips, sowing and that. Some people prefer to chit them on a bit of damp paper, but for me personally I like to sow direct into prepared holes and that way there's less chance of disturbing the taproot. Parsnips are very similar to carrots in that they like very fine soil, not too much nutrient and definitely no stones. And so for that I'm going to be sifting the soil. This compost that I'm using is called Bath Gates Champions Blend. It's an all-purpose compost with a few additives. And running it through the sieve, it is quite fine. You don't get much bits of rubbish in. They do also do a petri version as well, which I've tried. can see from that it produces a nice tilt. So now we need to get the holes prepared. Now this is the bed that I'm going to be sowing the parsnips in. Just a little tip here, I prefer to give the soil a light watering and that helps then to retain the shape of the cone as you bore them out in the soil. Parsnips, I usually do six in a row, and today I'll be sowing 36, so that'll be six rows in all together. Uh, because it's even spacing, I use my very old faithful marking out board. This board's the exact correct length for the bed, and I've just put a series of holes in various spacings. So if I want to mark out six holes, bop, 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 all equal with no measuring.
you may have noticed there was a black tape marker on the pole that's just to indicate the depth that it's knocked into and just rotate it ever increasing till it's about four inches 10 centimeters across at the mouth and you can see from that that the water in the soil has paid dividends because it stopped the hole from collapsing I'm not sure how well this will show up because of the shadows, but that's a reasonably formed conical hole there, and that will now be filled with the sifted soil. So this is the normal sifted soil we've just done. Got a little funnel. I'll just fill the hole up right the way up to the top. Might need to use a little cane just to help it down. Fill the hole right up to the top, straight into the next one. With each hole filled now with a sifted soil, just like to give them a drop of water on the top to settle the soil down before we start sowing. Now that the soil has been settled in with the water, I just like to give it a little flattening. Anything, oh, this is a lid off a jar and that then will create a nice flat surface to receive the seeds. Next I fit these little collars, them just plastic drain pipe down pipes, around about 70-80 millimetres long, just like they press them into the ground and what that does, it protects the seeds while they're emerging and also when you're hoeing it stops you risk damaging the seedlings. In theory they should come off once you've chopped them down to one seedling but usually I forget to take mine off and the end of the parsnip grows inside and difficult to get off. That's the parsnip bed already. In the end I did eight in a row and four rows, total 32. And all the protection collars are now in place. Just a little note here, when you do add the protection collars, you may just have to top the soil up in there again. As I've done with every one of these. I've also given them water and just tamped the soil down in there. So they're now ready to accept the seeds. Right, I'm about to sow the parsnip seed now. Now parsnip seeds can be very, very temperamental regarding germination. So, one rule of mine, personal preference, I never ever use old seed. The seed I always buy fresh every season. Parsnip seed is very flat and flimsy, so if possible, try and sow when there's no wind about. I tend to put four or five seeds fairly close together towards the centre of the collar and then I'll pick the best of those that germinate. So with all the seeds sown, I'm just topping the 
discs up now to the top. This is just the sieve compost with a bit of added vermiculite. And all I'll do then is give them a little light watering to settle them. I just popped a couple of Envirimesh frames on the top to protect them just in case the fox pays us a visit overnight. And uh, we're still encountering a few low temperatures during the night, so the germination might take a little bit longer. I've had the parsnip bed and the collars have done a wonderful job. As you can see, there's no damage at all. And uh, it's nice to know all the stations have germinated. I've just lifted the net off the parsnips. Apart from weeding, as you can see, the need thinning out. So I'm about to make the difficult decision of picking the best one in each station and then cutting the rest off at soil level. So that's it all thinned out, it's always a job that I'm glad to see the back of, because they say one false move on that, the plant's gone. But well, everything seemed to get okay. Removing the collars, it does take away a bit of the support and moving the other plants as well. So what as you see there, I've just mounded the soil up around the plant and that'll just get a bit of extra support while it puts a bit more growth on. There's the ones I removed and that's the collars. In about three or four years, this is the first time I've remembered to remove the collars, so it'll be interesting to see how they perform. Right now I'm gonna give them a good watering and put the net back over. If the rows on the watering cans are a bit fierce, just twist it round and it does actually soften the jets. When it comes to harvest time, there really is no hard and fast rules. Using your eyes is probably the best indicator you can get. I start by having a little dig around the collar of the plant. Just remove about a centimetre of soil from around the collar. And usually then you can tell from the size of the neck if, if you've got a decent parsnip or not. But that's no guarantee. We never know what's lurking be it below the soil level. You could have a nice neck and something that size with about 12 legs up. But usually following the method that we've just had a look at, you get a fairly high percentages of what I call a decent parsnip. Now I start looking, probably the end of October, early November, is when I start taking probably the first one. And that will carry us right the way through then until March. You can of course lift the parsnips at that stage if you want. 
you're probably fine depending on what run up you've had till the Christmas and that. The foliage might start to have gone limp, bent over and even squidgy. And that's quite okay to get a pair of secateurs or something, cut them off and pop it in the compost bin and leave them in the ground if you want or say you can actually lift them. Some people will store them in what they call a clamp or it's a bed of soil or you can use a, a box. Soil, sawdust, anything like old compost, just put them in there and leave them and they'll happily stay there. In fact, I've actually used the blue mushroom crates, fetch the parsnip up and just put them in with no covering and all, put them in the garden shed and they'll stay there happily for a couple of months. But my preference now is to actually leave them in the ground and fetch them out as I, when I need them. There are different ways of, of fetching them out the ground. You'll probably see the, the guys who grow the shell parsnips because they're grown in controlled containers and uh, they'll just press down and lift it up and it'll come out easy. But that's not the case always in the ground. So I tend to use this spade here. It's a, what they call a drain spade or a grafter charger. And I'll put that four sides around the parsnip and it just loosens the soil enough which then allows me to press down on the parsnip, give it a twist and pull out. Well that's what it says in theory, let's go and try it. <laughs> Since I took the tops off the parsnips, I'm starting to sprout again now which is, uh, helps me in a way so it lets me know where they are. The ground's a bit of frozen really, I should have got these out. Oh, I should have got this one out yesterday, but never mind. Once you get through the top surface, it ain't too bad. It's just the first inch or so, as the ground's a bit hard. But uh, as, I, as you know, it helps sweeten the parsnip up the touch of frost does. I'll just put this spade down the side of it, and hopefully it'll come up a bit easier. Easy, come up, that's famous last words. <laughs> Push down, twist, pull. Nice clean parsnip. Can't see any canker on it. Hope the rest of them as good as that. It might be worth mentioning at this stage that the technique that I'm explaining the way I grow my parsnips it's purely for the dinner table and that's why I fetch them out with a spade and just take the parsnip out and not really bother about the taproot because not a lot on there you can eat. If you're looking for exhibition and show stuff that's a different ball game altogether and you do really need to take care and nurture them more. You'll get them growing them in long drain pipes, stacked pallet collars quite high and even herb plastic barrels where they'll fill it with sharp sand core it out using a piece of drain pipe then fill in that there with the sifted compost but say that is a different ball game because some of the tap roots on there are enormous so I'll just put it straight this is purely for the dinner table well that just about wraps it up folks I do hope you've enjoyed it and got something out of it particularly the newer growers we have on YouTube now I've got quite a lot more of this style to release covering other different vegetables that I grow on my allotment. If you've not already subscribed, there's a button down the corner. Click on that and also click on the bell and that will notify you when I upload a new video. So many thanks for watching. I'm Nigel Jukes. You've been watching Muddy Boots Allotment. Mm -hmm.